and how you guys doing welcome to this edition of motorcycle madhouse morning mayhem it's actually the first segment don't forget to go over to motorcycle madhouse radio.com immediately following this video for the second part of the show with china Dow. it's monday baby and i know how all you guys feel about monday so do i trust me I can't stand it, but we got a pretty interesting uh, first segment today. I actually wanted to start out with a preview of a video I'm going to be releasing this coming Saturday, and that has to do with the question, if a police officer is using an excessive force on you, do you have the right to self-defense? Then we're going to go into uh, some news happening in Canada. I guess there was a huge bust up there uh, involving the Hells Angels and the Red Devils. But let's get on to this subject. Can you use self-defense against a police officer? Now, this question came to my mind because I've been watching this trial uh, happening up in Minnesota. And I have to say, if you're looking at all the pictures and stuff like that, the guy's knees on his neck. He don't even try hiding it. He, you know, there's one picture of him just looking around like nothing's happening, knee directly on his neck. And there's a big debate in this country, and I believe it was Maryland that just rescinded law enforcement's bill of rights as it was called i think it was passed in the the 70s or late 60s something like that after a supreme court uh decision we'll be going more into that on saturday's video uh but i just wanted to give a sneak preview and raise some uh questions about this because what do you do if you feel threatened your life's in jeopardy and it's law enforcement and doing it. Now, there's been a lot of test cases about this, but nothing concrete. And this is one law, if they're going to be addressing police reform, I think needs to be taken in consideration is self-defense. Because who wants to lay there while they're getting pounced over the head by some nightstick or by some fist and just let it happen just because it's a cop doing it. Now, that ain't right. I don't believe it is, man. I don't believe that's the kind of behavior that you have in a civilized country like the United States. That kind of stuff is only supposed to happen in communist, socialist, and third uh, world countries. That's not supposed to be happening here. But the problem is, you had African Americans dealing with it uh, since, uh, since they got here. You've had uh, Hispanics dealing with it. And other races dealing with this kind of brutality. As well as bikers. Now what happened in Waco, Texas... With the Kazakh Bandito deal at Twin Peaks, I believe was excessive force. And I'll even contend it was outright murder. Outright murder. Now, there's been four bodies that were attached to them cops' guns. Anything happened? No, nothing happened. Because guess what? It's in a state that is law enforcement friendly. Now, you're hearing about all these crying and whining of cops wanting to retire early or they don't want to be a cop anymore because they're taking away the liability shield. I believe in Maryland it was 440000 Uh Now they raised it up to 850000 that a cop would be liable, not to mention a 10-year prison term. Now, do cops... Are they being held accountable? I don't know. We're going to see out of this uh, Minnesota deal. The Minnesota deal to me, and again, I'll talk more about this, is a messed up case. I don't care 
if the dude passed the bad 20. I don't care if the dude was hired in hell. What I care about was the cop's action when he was putting his knee on his neck. Now, I can understand you put your knee on somebody's back. But when you're putting your knee on somebody's neck, you're cutting off all freaking air. Of course, after five or ten minutes, dude's going to pass out and he's going to die. So, yes, somebody like that should be held accountable. Now, if you've been watching the prosecution's case in this deal, they've been tripped up a bunch, man. Uh, the defense, they've been putting a lot of reasonable doubt, which, you know, if you have reasonable doubt, you're not supposed to convict. But if you actually go off of what you've seen then there shouldn't be no doubt on the way he treated him. Especially, I don't know if it was him or one of the other cops, but knew this guy. Knew him from a bar, worked with him, something like that. So, there was issues between the two already. So, yeah. He might have been pissed off about something. Next thing you know, he's pushing on his neck, pushing on his neck. Now, they do say about the fentanyl and all that stuff, but we'll see. Him aside, what's expected of us, Let's us as bikers, if you're getting pounded on? Now, everybody knows most bikers are alpha males ain't going to take that crap. You know, I always said I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6. That is especially true in a situation like that. I believe you have the uh, right to self-defense. I don't care who's wearing a badge and who's not. Now, there is some good material on this stuff. Uh, I got something from uh, the colelawteam.com. Uh, and here's some stuff they say you should be doing to protect yourself. Personally, I think you can do all this stuff that they're talking about and you're still going to be put in a position where you can lose your life. So let's go over this a little bit. I'll give my uh, thoughts. You give yours in the comment section. It goes on to say uh, dealing with police. Talking to police can be stressful and uncomfortable, even when you've done nothing wrong. Boy, do we know that feeling, don't we all? When you're sitting there getting profiled because all you're doing is riding a motorcycle. Next thing you know, they're hitting those cherries and pulling you over, giving you all kinds of hell. They want to search you just because they think you're wearing a patch. But all it could be is a freaking hog patch or an A-Bay patch, something like that. But they're too stupid to know the difference. The situation is only worse when we can uh, constantly listening to news stories of bad encounters, police brutality, and overall bad cops. And yes, there are a lot of them. Like I said, for every club member that goes down for something I guarantee you I can find a cop that done something worse you may be wondering what your rights are when talking to police and how to protect yourself then he goes on below the information is what they're telling their clients to do when interacting uh, with cops they say the most important rule is to always be calm and polite calm and polite most people are and I'll argue even bikers that get pulled over are polite it is the officer and his attitude that escalates the situation look at Kopi's bar for instance that is the one in Pittsburgh where the cops were getting all drunk beforehand and they started running their mouths to the pagans. Pagans didn't know they were undercover or whatever the hell it was. But they got away with beating on the pagans. They got scot-free. They were not charged. 
Why? Because it was the pagans? That was police brutality caught right on tape. We've actually interviewed one of the witnesses that were there, one that filmed it, saying they didn't do nothing wrong. It was the undercovers that kept on coming up to them and pestering the crap out of them. Because if you watch the video, you could actually see that the pagans were being cordial. Even the most professional police officers can become aggressive if they feel threatened. Define threatened. Seriously, define that. Because it seems like these guys are threatened when the wind blows. It's like their dick gets hard when they feel like they're going to start whooping on somebody, if you will. Always be mindful of your language, tone of voice, and body language. Mindful of your language, tone of voice. So basically, you got to be a bitch. That's what it's saying right there. You can't talk to them like a man would talk to another man. You got to make yourself less superior than them in order to... For them not to feel threatened. It may feel uh, frustrating to have to be respectful if you feel they are not respecting you in return. Yeah, you're damn right. But it goes on to say, uh, being calm and polite can stop a bad situation from turning worse and ensure your safety. You know, one thing that uh, really got me, and it's like uh, when I talk to BD, young black kids are taught from a very early age about cop interaction, especially when it comes to being pulled over by the cops. They're taught to put their hands on the wheel right away where you can see them. They're taught to do this, be respectful, be calm. And that's some scary stuff in this country. Nobody should ever have to feel like they got to teach their kids at a young age how not to get shot by a cop. But that's actually what's going on in this country. People are getting shot because cops feel threatened. Sad stuff, man. Now... Police like to see your hands for their own safety, so avoid reaching for your paperwork before they ask. Having your car lights on at night is important so police can tell you are not armed. These guidelines will ensure police you are not a danger and will hopefully have a positive impact on your encounter. One thing to note is that police can legally order you out of your vehicle. So you should comply when asked. Hmm. Really? They do have a decent thing over here about uh, five things you should remember in a traffic stop. Maybe I should throw that in the Saturday's video as well. Now, this happens to bikers all the time. If the police are pressuring you, uh, pressuring you to, into a search, asking you questions or generally hassling you, boy, does that sound like a profile and stop, doesn't it? You should ask if you are free to go. Simply ask, quote, are you detaining me, or am I free to go? They're going to give you a big attitude as soon as you uh, say some shit like that. Unless the officer is planning to detain or arrest you, they should let you leave. This also establishes that the encounter is not voluntary, which will help you later if you end up in court. See, the problem is with that is people have to go through these encounters, and if they do get arrested, then next thing you know, you're fighting for your life, man, as far as years lost, money, job lost, the whole nine yards. 
It should never have to get to that point. And what you have to worry is when you take a, uh, a bench trial during something like this, is the court system, they automatically side with the judge or with the cops. And that's some BS right there. Uh, they say not to do is not assert that you know your rights. Why? That's a question I'd have. Why? Know a high-powered attorney? Yeah, that'd piss him off. Or something similar. Uh, yeah, never tell them that you screwed their mother the night before. You, you know, you tend to go to jail on that one. Uh, you don't want to seem hostile or make the officer angry. Hmm, so now, because they got a badge, they got a gun, they're gods, is what you're saying. We can't say something to them because they might get angry. I get it. Instead, show them you know your rights by asserting them calmly. Do not waive your rights. One thing that has always messed me up. The police can and will legally lie to you. But it's all right for them, but it's not all right for us. Good uh, decision there, Supreme Court. Never let false threats or promises trick you into waiving your rights. Basically, your name, your birth date, I want a lawyer. I don't know how many times I got to tell people that one. Now... While this may seem like a no-brainer, never run for it on the cops, running can indicate there is probable cause you committed a crime. Uh, during stop and frisk, you may verbally assert your refusal to consent. However, never touch an officer or physically resist. If you touch an officer, it can lead to you being tased, beaten, or charged with felony assault. So they can beat your ass, but you can't defend yourself. Then he says, never tell them you're going to file a complaint or ask for their badge number. Uh, man, uh, your most important rights when dealing with cops is the Fourth Amendment, that search and seizure. The Fifth Amendment, pleading the Fifth. You guys know what that is, hopefully. Uh, the Sixth Amendment, your lawyer up. And then you, they say, uh, after everything, go ahead and report to police misconduct. Uh, then uh, make sure that uh, you contact the lawyers, basically what they're saying to you. Which, hey, that's a good article. Uh, again, I might have to just put uh, that five things to do during a traffic stop on uh, that video on Saturday. Sad state of affairs when you have to worry about losing your life because some prick cop wants to play the God card. And if anybody's ever been pulled over on a motorcycle during a profiling stop, you know what I'm talking about. They don't even walk up to you calmly. They're dicks when they first come up to you. And then they wonder why you're a dick back. But at the same time, you're saying, well, wait a second. They're doing this shit on purpose. They're just hoping you get out of hand. Sad state of affairs. Now, let's go to uh, this big bust up in Canada. Let's listen to a little bit of their press conference. Then we'll go into uh, a little bit of more what was charged a whole nine yards. So let's listen in. Ontario and into the province of Quebec. Drug trafficking and firearm trafficking. The criminal networks involved a number of members of the Hells Angels from the Brooklyn and Belleville Charters as well as the Red Devils Motorcycle Club. Charges include offenses related to the participation in a criminal organization, trafficking of firearms, trafficking and possession for the purpose of trafficking in controlled substances, including cocaine, fentanyl, methamphetamine, and cannabis edibles. Along with the quantities of fentanyl, cocaine, and methamphetamine, investigators all... Okay, I'm bored already. <laughs> Anyway, let's go to uh, this, uh, they're calling it Project Kakia. Uh, three area men charged in connection with investigation into organized crime, Hells Angels, and the Red Devils. This out of Belleville, Ontario, Canada. 
boy, it seems, it seems like they're always busy bodies up there. But I guess this had to do with all kinds of crap, man. All kinds of agencies. I guess what they would call the feds up there is like the RCMP, uh, local, all that kind of jurisdiction stuff. Now, there was 28 arrested, 291 charges laid, 55 search warrants. Woo! Uh, here's some of the seizures. Uh, shotguns, rifles, handgun, $290,000 in currency. Overcapacity magazines, suppressors, flash grenades. Uh, it was actually interesting. I was looking on YouTube yesterday, off subject here. Uh, the UK... The guy was showing off some of the firearms that they could have over there. Man, it's like Daniel Boone days over there. I feel sorry for him. Uh, I guess bulletproof vests are illegal. $148,000 in stolen property. Uh, five uh, motor vehicles. Uh, then they had the club's clothing, cannabis, blah, blah, blah. Numerous individuals are facing serious charges at the conclusion of Project Kakia, a Durham Regional Police and Royal Canadian Mounted Police joint investigation into organized crime within the region of Durham and surrounding jurisdictions. This was a six-month multi-jurisdictional investigation led by the DRPS Gun and Gang Enforcement Unit in partnership with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Transitional Series and Organized Crime Unit. Can't you guys come up with anything simpler than that, man? That's like a mouthful for me. Come on, give me a break up here. Uh, they say the criminal networks involved a number of members of the Hells Angels uh, from the Brooklyn and Belleville charters as well as the Red Devils. Uh, the investigation also provided information related to a homicide that occurred in Oshawa on the 29th of November, 2020 which resulted in the arrest of Brady White for his participation. Uh, then it goes into who was arrested, where it was arrested. Then they're all over there jerking each other's peckers. Hey, you did a good job. You did a good job. All that good stuff. Now, uh, this again was uh, from the police. Uh, I ain't going to even go over that one, man. That's redundant if you ask me. Uh, now, another thing, a longtime Hells Angel sentenced to nine years for drug trafficking. A uh, large drug trafficking network in St. Uh, Jean sur whatever, which your freaking French stuff, man. Hey, I put it in uh, the captions and stuff, but I can't freaking talk freaking French. Anyway, uh, for his leading role in a drug trafficking network that operated in that jurisdiction, uh, Claude it was 53, a full patch member of the uh, biker gangs chapter. Uh, yeah, right. Has more than five years left to serve. Had been detained for exactly two years while w awaiting the outcome of his case and served some of the time under lockdown because of COVID-19. You know, everybody's got their freaking cases going three, four years because of this COVID-19. It's like, really, you can't put on a freaking mask and get these trials going? I don't know. Uh, during the sentence and arguments held in February, the prosecutor asked uh, him to be sentenced to an overall prison term of 12 years. She argued he chose the life of being a member of the notorious outlaw biker gang and noted he has been a hell's angel for two decades now. Uh, then the defense lawyer suggested a six prison, uh, six year. So basically they went in the middle. That's what they did. <laughs> now look at this, man. This was like, holy cow. Are you crazy? I couldn't believe this one. Court tosses search warrant for Hells Angels Surrey Clubhouse by Kim Bolin. Uh, the judge says police did not have sufficient grounds to search a Hells Angels Clubhouse last November, despite a biker prospect found in a Jeep nearby with two low, uh, loaded firearms. Now, it seems like some of these judges in Canada is waking up and saying, you know what, enough. Enough with your illegal searches. Enough with your harassment. Some of these judges are waking up. Uh, 
The Justice uh, Miriam Groper sided with lawyers for the Hells Angels Hardside chapter in question a search warrant executed on the 20th of November. Rock and roll. Uh, the warrant was issued hours after, and we covered this, uh, a prospect and Brothers Keeper gang associate uh, crashed a Jeep just a few blocks from the clubhouse. When firefighters arrived just after 8 a.m., uh, Menender, believed to have been driving, had fled. Uh, the other guy was at the scene uh, wearing his Hells Angels prospect vest. He was also found with a small bag of what was believed to be cocaine. Uh, you think he would have got rid of that just a little bit faster, don't you? Uh, then he had two uh, loaded firearms, both uh, prohibited. Uh, then they were talking about Baca and all that crap. Uh, but anyway... Uh, looks like, uh, the club's got a win up there, man, from a judge. Awesome stuff. Now, here we go. Here we go. Prosecutors say Downs man illegally possessed firearms, so cocaine as part of gang involvement. Um, uh, they got this wrong already, and I'll tell you why. Uh, a Downs man faces 12 uh, charges for cocaine delivery and possessing a firearm as a convicted felon, deriving from his involvement in a local motorcycle gang. Uh, the dude's charged with seven counts of unlawful delivery of cocaine, one count of unlawful possession of a controlled substance with intent to deliver. Uh, then they told when the deliveries took place. Uh, prosecutor in court Thursday said local authorities had been investigating the D.C. Eagles Motorcycle Club, a one-percenter motorcycle club. They are 99%ers NFGs. They are actually the first ones that you can say coined 99%er no fucking good. So they got that wrong right there, as far as I know. Unless they freaking changed, I don't know. Uh, he was one of nine members who have been arrested as part of the investigation. Uh, he has a uh, bail of fifty thousand dollars, fifty G's, baby. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you see how uh, they usually get some stuff wrong, don't you? Again, uh, the DC Eagles, they were the original 99% uh, deal. They actually put a diamond on, and it was 99% NFG. Uh, I guess uh, you can say that's where the 99%er was born out of. Uh, but they're a tough group of freaking guys, man. You know, you have all these 1% uh, clubs throwing on these diamonds now. I don't care if you just started one out in your own backyard, you're throwing on a 1% diamond. Uh, I wish, I just wish they would go up to some of these 99% clubs. They get the shit kicked out of them. You know, but things have changed. Things have changed. I have to admit it. I can't say it hasn't. I'm just not in the know. Whatever. Anyway, don't forget. Right after this, get your butt over to MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. We're going to have ourselves a funny show there with China Dow sitting right next to me right now, ready to come on the air. Boy, do we have some laughs, man. Uh, you got to listen to Friday night's episode. I had a game show on. You know, we were playing with her and her sister. Yeah, you're going to want to hear that episode. I can tell you, it got pretty crazy, man. China Dow's still sour, man, because she lost, but it is what it is. Anyway, man, I'll see you guys over there on the second half of this show and don't forget i'm going to be going over this subject that i started out with uh in a whole video on saturday get it get her done